Okay guys, I'm out at the park today. It's a very nice day. And I figured I'd come out and uh, shoot with the RP to see if I could get some good landscape pictures. Uh, it's a nice breeze. It's warm, but it's a nice breeze out. In this area, there's a, a little body of water that I hadn't seen before. So I figure I'd take some pictures of it. Uh, the thing about it is this. When you are out and you're shooting, you, you have to look at all of the different scenes around you. And for me, I think this is a pretty decent scene. You know? So, I'm going to take some shots of this and uh, see what I can do with it. Also, this little bridge here, they painted it orange. It was blue last year. They painted it orange this year. And right here. I'm going to take pictures of those and see what they can look like. Being creative. I'm not actually looking for something that someone could use on a blog post or whatever. I'm just taking pictures that I like. You know, images that I like, things that I, I like to see. Like, like these cuckleburrs, we call them cuckleburrs. You know, but uh, I'm gonna take uh, some images of these cuckleburrs. I don't know. It, it seems to me that when you are flowing, you can see a multitude of images in your mind, but being able to place them so that they mean something to somebody, that's just like looking at this scene right here, where these trees and this walkway or, you know, I mean, who could use this? Who, who, who could use this? Who would use this? But I take it anyway because now these gimbals are something else. And 279, so it's way under my budget of $1,000, but I still have to create a budget to purchase it. $200 for this. So the first thing that you do when you find that you need a piece of equipment to upgrade your craft, you have to first study to understand what it is that you're actually purchasing. Because first of all, you want to be able to get something that you can use to do what you want to do. All right, guys. I thought I'd try to edit some of those images from the park, submit them to a uh, Shutterstock, Dreamstime, you know, very good images to submit. So let's get into uh, editing the images. <laughs> Photoscape X, that's the name of it. So, we'll, we'll do them. We'll review these and pick out the ones that uh, look okay to, to submit. Chromatic aberration. It's blown out. Chromatic aberration. I don't know if I want to mess with it. Oh, that might have a little potential.
at 100%. If I can see details, and even if they're, you know, not sharp, tech sharp, I still might be happy with that. I like how that looks. What's this? Oh wow, it's out of focus too bad. Oh wow. Hmm. But it's not it's not in focus. That's the only bad thing about it. And it probably will be rejected if I submit it, even though I like how it looks. We'll apply that. And then we'll we'll take care of this right here. Yep. Anyway, we'll save that one. And it will go to submission. Oh, good. I like it. Oh, yeah, this this will go. This will go. Let me see. Oh, good. Good bokeh. Uh, this. Let me see. Oh, it might pass. like that yeah perfect yeah so now I saw this little fella he like was looking at me and I'm saying well wow, okay so he, he goes up into the tree, and then he lays on the branch, and he stares directly at me. Now, I bring only the 85 with me, so I don't have a long enough range so that I can pinpoint his eye. So I said to myself, well, let's just see what type of range the 85 has. And even though it's not tack sharp, I mean, I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to submit this image because it, it was just, it was just too crazy the way he just stared at me the whole time. Anyway, I think I can sharpen it some. And after that, I'll probably let it go. But I really 
do believe that he was teasing me. I mean, because I was afraid to get too close to him, but I wanted to get the perspective that I had of him. So, I mean, but the 85 did pretty good. I mean, even though it's an EF lens, that full frame sensor is so powerful. I mean, I'm, I'm in love with it. And I believe that once I get some native glass, some RF lenses for it, that I can produce some really stunning images. I should have brought more than one lens, but I'm telling you, it's important that you understand your equipment. And if you're relying on one lens and you don't understand the capabilities of your other lenses, what happens if, if you don't have it? So that's why, even though I don't have a large kit, I have like five lenses and I try to, to force myself to take images with one lens, changing the perspective with my feet and with my, my body uh, uh, alignment to the subject. So all I know is this, I'm really digging this full frame sensor and I can't tell you how important it is to me to be able to level up, even though my budget is a small budget. Your budget, you know, if you can afford to get the R6, hey, go for it. If you can afford to get the Sony, go for it. But for me, I believe that I can make great images with whatever equipment I have at the time. And if I level up, if I move up, if I increase the amount of gear that I have or the cost of the amount of gear that I have, I don't believe it's going to affect my ability to make good images. So anyway, I don't want to be underexposed on this image. I wanted to have enough light so that you can see some type of clarity in the squirrel once you zoom in to 100 percent but i also want it to be dark enough i like i don't like my images underexposed but i like them to have a real rich type of feel to them so i will go under a little bit but in this instance i think that what I can do is I can lighten up my background enough and then probably bring in just a little black to, to touch the squirrel. Now, in Photoshop, it's totally different. You can just pinpoint whatever part of the image that you want to lighten or darken and do it that way. It's possible here in Photoshop X, Photoscape X, but it's targeted and it's not as refined as Photoshop. Anyway, I really like this image and I think that I will try it. I will submit this image and try to um, get it approved. Okay, so for better or worse, I think I'll submit this image and let it ride. For me, the editing of the images that I take is as important as capturing the images. And when I submit them, I like to do my metadata. And the reason why it's important to do your metadata is that I believe that 90 some percent of the reason why your image may be chosen is because you have given the viewer a reason to get that image. And a lot of my images 
have been chosen, I believe, because of my metadata, because of my descriptions, because of my title, because of my tags. So I spend uh, as much time as possible creating titles, descriptions, and tags that will lead a buyer to view, at least view my image. So for me, the best thing to do is to try to find out what are buyers looking for in an image. And being technical is as important as being descriptive because a lot of times the, the, the accuracy and the technicality of your descriptions and your titles will be a trigger for people because they might be looking for that exact same thing. Like this image of a, a golf flag pin, a, 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 a pin for golfers. I'm going to put golfing first and foremost so that they know this image is talking about their sport. So in doing that, just make sure that you try to be as descriptive in your title and as technical in your title as possible to increase your visibility on whatever website you're on. For me, I love uh, uh, editing images and creating uh, a scene. The most important thing, I believe, is just being in the moment. When I say in the moment, that's what a picture, a, a captured image does. It places us in that moment forever. Hey guys, if you stayed to the end of this video, I really appreciate you. Uh, if you subscribe, if you if you have, leave a comment, hit the like button. Uh, I'm trying to create a business from my passion and in YouTube this vehicle this this media has allowed me to actually show how I arrive at my end products and I'm loving it so if you uh, if you find any value in anything that you see on the channel, hey, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, hit the like button. Anyway, I appreciate you. And until the next video, keep clicking.